Hi, good day. My name is Eduardo with Identity Technical Support, and today we'll be covering factory defaulting your SNP2 or SNP3. Factory defaulting a SNP2 or SNP3 will set it to a factory IP address. When factoring a SNP3, if you are connected to a DHCP server, it will receive an IP address from the DHCP server. Let's cover the steps necessary to factory default a SNP2 or SNP3. You're going to want to start by powering down the controller by removing the battery and AC power. Now that your controller is powered down, you're going to want to configure switch bank 2 with all four switches to the on position, so that would be to the right or to the back of the can, and you're going to want to configure switch bank 3, all eight switches to the left, to the off position, and then you're going to want to go ahead and power on your controller in this state. As the controller powers on, you're going to go ahead and see a countdown on the SNP3 lights. You'll see all six lights light up and then a countdown, and you'll see an LED rotation clockwise. Allow for at least one LED rotation, then you can power down the controller. Your SNP3 is now factory defaulted, so we're going to go ahead and configure our switches to how they were before. We're going to go ahead and turn on our switch 1 and switch 4 and switch number 8 for address 1 and power on the controller. We'll go ahead and let the controller fully boot, and now we can search for it with the SNP Hunt and Configure tool or through Velocity. If your MX controller comes equipped with an onboard SNP 2 or SNP 3, the steps to factory default are the same. The only difference is you'd be configuring the onboard switches rather than the expansion card switches. To factory default the SNP 3 on the MX1 plastic enclosure, the steps are the same as on the MX1 metal enclosure. On an MX1 metal enclosure, to factory default the SNP 3, we're going to go ahead and start by powering down our unit. We would configure what's considered switch bank 2, which is the switch bank with six switches next to the RJ45. We're going to set switches 1 through 4 to the on position. So that'll be towards the center of the board. And we'll also configure the address to 0. So we'll need a screwdriver, and we'll set the dial to 0. Now that the controller is in this state, we're going to go ahead and power on the controller. We're going to let the controller boot up, and we're going to allow the SNB LEDs to do at least one rotation. As you can see, SNB LEDs did about one rotation, so we'll go ahead and power the controller back down. We'll configure our switches back to how they were, so that's switch number one and four to the on position, and we'll configure our dial back to the address that we need. We were using address one, so we're going to reconfigure that to address one. We'll go ahead and power on the controller. Now your SNP3 on the MX1 metal enclosure is factory defaulted. The steps to search for SNP2 or SNP3 will be in another video in the video description. This has been Eduardo, helping you keep your world verified.